Hi, my name is Russell Pohl, and I'm currently the president of the BC Federation of Foster Parents. I have also been a foster parent for 15 years. For today's episode of BC Foster Basics, I would like to talk to you about facilitating connection with families of children and youth in care. The standards for foster home states, whenever possible, and in accordance with a care plan, children and youth are supported and encouraged to maintain and strengthen relationships with parents, siblings, extended family members, cultural community, and any other significant relationships. This is expected unless such access has been denied or restricted by the child social worker or a court order. Foster parents cannot restrict access to family members and it cannot be used as a consequence for bad behavior. Effective partnership with birth family members start with an understanding that the ministry's primary goal for children in care is permanency. This can be achieved through reunification with the biological family if possible, but regardless, relational permanency is very important to children in care. Foster parents support this need through encouraging facilitating and maintaining these relationships for their foster children. The parents of the children we care for have challenges to overcome and stresses to manage. They may be transient, struggle with depression, have a history of trauma, be involved with alcohol, drugs, or both, or they may be in conflict with the law. They also may be missing or grieving for their children, experiencing embarrassment or shame, sadness, or anger, hopeless or fearful of being judged and likely resentful that their child is living with someone else. It is important to be aware and compassionate when dealing with the children and their biological families. Children all come into our homes with attachments to family members and other significant people. Often children can be confused about who is in charge. They will wonder who they're supposed to listen to, who they can talk to, and they may struggle with their loyalty toward their parents if they like their foster family. Behaviors may emerge that are difficult to make sense of. They may play down or lie to their parents about the experiences in your home. They may think that if they misbehave, you will send them home. Most children want to return home, regardless of why they came into care. This speaks to the importance and depth of the parent and child bond. Your attitudes towards the birth family members impacts visits for both the parents and the foster child. When you criticize a child's parents, you are criticizing the child too. Your acceptance helps prevent the child from having to choose between the foster and birth family. Remember to include the child's birth family in everyday conversation. These could be the statements like, I wonder what mom is doing today. What kinds of things have you done with your dad on sunny days? Let's draw a picture of dad. How does mom make this kind of dinner for you? Recognizing your foster child's need to talk about their family gives them permission to do so and encourages dialogue. Understand that some things bring comfort to children and youth in care like the scent of a blanket they bring to your home or the texture of a sweater. Be respectful and interested in what is important to them. The Benefits of Family Visits Visits give social workers a chance to assess how parents are progressing and to know when the risk to children has been removed, allowing the children to return home. Remember to include in your log the details about the visit. Stick to the facts and observations rather than opinions. Ongoing contact with birth family increases the probability of children going home. Birth family visits affirm that a parent's role in relationship with the child is recognized and valued. Seeing their child often motivates parents to make needed changes. It also helps parents to feel they aren't losing their child, helps them to feel connected, provides opportunity for modeling positive parenting skills, provides time for the foster caregiver to learn more about the child in your care, such as likes, dislikes, fears, and more about his or her history. Assist birth family with learning about the child's progress and adjustment to foster care. Children benefit from visits because it calms separation anxieties, helps them express feelings and relate better to the foster family, keeps the family attachment and assists children in seeing their family realistically, provides reassurance that their families are still a part of their lives. 
Visits can be the foundation for a positive working relationship with the child's family, which will be a big influence on whether you stay connected to the child when they return home. Keep in mind that assisting with visits is an expectation of all foster families, whether it be to prepare the child for the visit, to simply transport the child to the visit, or to supervise the visit. Experienced Level 3 caregivers are expected to involve a child's family in his or her daily life and to teach the child's parents, extended family, or guardian to provide care for the child by recognizing and meeting a child's special needs. I hope you've enjoyed this segment of BC Foster Basics. If you need further information or assistance regarding facilitating connections with families of children and youth in care, or any other fostering subject, please call us at one 800 663 99 99 or check out our website at bcfosterparents.ca. Also, please don't forget to visit the BCFFPA YouTube channel regularly for more topics in the BC Foster Basics series, topics such as healthcare for children and youth, and many more.